This is Medrash on Chuma Parshat Korach, and it is entitled, A Misguided Attempt to Redefine Religious Expression. The Medrash starts out with a very far out uh, Medrash, in which um, far out, I mean, it takes place on another planet. It takes place on a certain level in the heavens where the sun and the moon were hiding in protest. They refused to, to do their usual rotation. They saw a threat to Moshe from Korach and his rebellion, and they said to God, until you intervene, we're not going to go on our usual rotation. So God said to them, you know, it's very nice that you care so much about Moshe's feelings, and that's great, but I would have, I would have expected you to have the same reaction to the fact that for many, many years, millions of people have been worshiping the sun and the moon. And this is a, a travesty because they are, you know, not recognizing that God actually created the sun and the moon. Instead, they're, they're bypassing God and worshiping the sun and the moon. This is a real travesty. This is something I would have expected you to get upset about and perhaps go on strike about. You know, as far as Moshe, that's wonderful. I got it covered, you know, the earth from, from already the days of creation. There is already the earth waiting to swallow up those who are rebelling against, uh, against Moshe. That's taken care of. But I think there's a little bit of hypocrisy in what you've chosen to go on strike about. And when the sun and the moon heard this, they were so ashamed that they further refused to move from their location because they were embarrassed. And, it, and the measure says, until this day, God has to throw arrows at them to get them every day to go on their rotation. So, of course, what does this have to do with Korach and his rebellion? Well, very simple. The, uh, what God said about the you know, misguided uh, work stoppage and misguided values, this is really what the story of Korach is all about. Misguided values. They were, the sun and moon were seeing the small picture of Moshe, Moshe and this rebellion, but not the big picture of, of God and idolatry. Same thing with Korach. He was seeing the small picture of his power and his jealousy and his being passed over for a position. And he kind of wrapped himself in the flag that he said his famous words, we're all, we're all equal, we're all holy. It's no reason why Moshe and Aaron should have been chosen for these positions and not, and not me. Now it's true that he was from the same tribe, but the reason this was actually a rebellion against God is because it's very critical to understand that it was God that chose Moshe and God that chose Aaron. Not that Moshe and Aaron usurped this power. So his pretending to, you know, to say this is about democracy, it's really a rebellion against God because it was God's choice. And there's another famous Medrash which you may have heard of, and that is that Korach said to Moshe, let me ask you two theological questions. Let's say you had a garment that was all made out of that blue dye that we are supposed to use uh, in, on one string in the corner of the tzitzit, the tcheles. But the whole garment was made out of this tcheles. Would you still have to put on that string? And Moshe said, of course, that's what the, that's what the Torah says. Put the string on the, on the corner of your garment. And he was ridiculed. And then uh, he asked the second question, what if you had a whole room full of Sifrei Torah? Do you still have to put a mezuzah on the door? Isn't that extraneous? After all, the mezuzah contains parchment, but here you have the whole Torah and a whole room full of Torahs. And again, Moshe said, no, the law as prescribed by God is that you have to always put a mezuzah on the doorpost. doesn't matter if there are many uh, Torah scrolls in there. So you see now, and especially I want to alert you to a beautiful interpretation by Rav Yosef Do Soloveitchik, the Rav, uh, it's called the Common Sense Rebellion Against Judaism. You'll see it's, a, it's, a, it's an audio file, and uh, maybe it's also written up in different places if you Google it. So the Rav analyzes this in a very, very meaningful way and, and really says that what Korach was saying was that the most important thing isn't the commandments as they were outlined by God, but it's this sort of religious expression. In other words, if I look at that blue dye and the Talmud says that the that the blue is, you know, the, the, the blue of the, of the uh, sky being reflected on the, the blue of the ocean, and that reflects the, 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 uh, the heavens where the, God's throne resides. 
And you know, so this is a very, very uh, lofty religious expression that you're supposed to get from looking at that blue dye. So I'm, I'm getting that panoramic view by looking at the whole garment. Why do I need the string, the blue string? So he's, he's, he's bypassing, as I said, the religious, the, the law as it was outlined in the Torah and just going towards the religious expression. So that is, of course, a very dangerous thing because it means you can't have a uniform religion because no two people experience uh, things spiritually the same way. You know, for some person, maybe they'll want to go to the synagogue and uh, want to look at inspiring views, inspiring, ar inspiring architecture, inspiring music, inspiring videos, whatever the case may be, everybody has a different idea of what inspires them. And that is not, you cannot have a religion that way. It has to be uniformity. And so if you're starting to go to religious, almost artistic expression instead of religious expression, it's a very slippery slope and very dangerous. And uh, so that's the way Rav Soloveitchik analyzed it. And now you see sort of the insidious hypocrisy that's built in in the, the way um, Korach was peddling uh, this, uh, his revolt, as if it's, you know, it's for everybody everybody's sake and for democracy and everybody's religious expression and it's quite a dangerous thing so i want to wish you all a great shabbat